At Adelaide Oval, last season's wooden spooners, South Adelaide's Panthers take the field against their semi-final conquerors and 1963 premiers, Port Adelaide. The Magpies snatched a one-point victory in the semi and the second biggest crowd in South Australia's football history, over 56,000 are hoping for another thriller. Uh, and I think in 64, Ken was pretty good to us because that was after the second semi-final incident. Right. When he, he sort of... Uh, we collided and he fell over and he couldn't continue. <laughs> and I said to him as we were... Who did you hit him? Uh, unfortunately, he bounced the ball uh, and it bounced back at him, over him, and I was coming in to contest the knock ruck and I more or less ran into him. And uh, he couldn't continue and couldn't umpire the preliminary grand final, uh, final because he had still had the delayed effects concussion. But he came back for the grand final. Mm. And as we were having the spring inspection, those days you walked behind him, I did, I did relate. I said, now look, in the, in the second semi, you gave Port everything. You really did look after him, Ken. Now what about helping the little underdogs? I said, because I'll fix you up in the first quarter this time. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible thing to say. Terrible thing to yeah. say, but uh, it was mainly in jest. Sure. And uh, <coughs> I thought he umpired well. My wife was about to give birth to my number two son, and he was due on grand final day, so the doc and his wisdom said, well, look, Ian, any fit person can miss one night, but seeing he's going to come on Friday night before the game, Maybe we should knock you out with a drop on Thursday night and make sure you have a good sleep. I says, great idea, Doc. So what did the little blighter do? He came on the Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my wife was trying to get me out of bed to take it down to the hospital. I said, catch a tram, catch anything. I said, I'm too tired, you know. Hey, this is a true story, too. This I bet you did. As God is my witness, yeah. Did she no, catch I, did. No, no, no. I was just going to say, did she catch the tram? No, I took her down there, but I tell you what, I didn't wait around to find out what was going on. I got back into bed as fast as anything. And it was funny because the doc came screaming up about half past six in the morning. He said, Ian, great news, you've got a son. I said, beauty, doc, and we straight back to bed. I think probably the highlight for me was the fact that um, just prior to the end, in one of the last kicks I ever had in league football, uh, produced a goal that actually clinched the game for South Adelaide. Ian Day has a great opportunity of sealing the flag for South. His kick is through the centre in a great moment for Daisy, who now goes into retirement as Souths win the Premiership. Nine goals, 15 to Ports, 5-12. And I turned around, I turned around, and I hit curls right on the arm, and I nearly pulverised it. I said, we've got them, we've got them, mate, we've got them. And we ran back to the centre, and when I knew we'd had him, is I saw Jeff Motley, who was the captain of Port Adelaide, and he'd done us cold in four grand finals I was telling you about in, in the 50s, and I looked at Jeff, and I could see the look of despair on his face, and I knew at that moment, that we'd beaten them. But I know when I got home at that time, uh, I think my sons, Mark and Anthony, I think they might have been about three. They were too young to come to the football. And uh, I got home and Mark was crying and he said, why can't you teach them better? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was to blame, not the players. <laughs> Arthur Stone, one of great supporters of South Adelaide, had a pub called the Victoria down the bottom end of Hindley Street. And we went down there to celebrate. And the end was a teetotaler in those days. And Curly and Darley, made me horribly sick. He introduced me to think, what do they call it, black velvet? I think it's champagne and stout. It's not a bad way to start drinking if you want to be ill very quickly. And uh, Curls comes along, because he'd been on television to say why they'd won. He comes along and he says to me, he says, geez, the way you're going, young fella, he says, you won't make nine o'clock. And I beat him, I was about 10 past nine, and I just flaked, I was just off. <gasps> made a dreadful mess of myself. That was at the hotel? At the Victoria Hotel. How did you get home, and what time? That's a good question. All my teammates, those lovely fellas, left me for dead in room nine of Victoria Hotel. And I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and, oh, was I sick. I was violently sick in the waste paper basket in the, in the washrooms. And I thought, I've got to get home, I've got to get home. And I walked down out of the pub and, of course, Hindley Street's deserted. So I thought, now, I wasn't stupid. I thought, now, how can I get home? I said, taxi. Good thinking. So I walked down this, one of those side streets to North Terrace, up past the South, which used to be the South in those days. And old Louis was a notorious head waiter. Even you'd remember him, Peter. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard of him, that, that old? Yeah. Anyway, I sat on the steps of the south. I couldn't go any further up North Terrace, and I was sick again. It brought my heart up all over the steps of the south. I thought, geez, Louie would be pleased. I'm a bit sorry we got onto this. Yeah. This is very colourful, know. though. Go yeah, on. Right, it sure was, yeah. So I finally made it up to the Gresham, which is where the, I think it's the AMP building is now, on the corner of King William and North Terrace, the Gresham Hotel, and that's where they had the taxi stands. And I said, I've got to get home. Can I have a cab? And he would not let me in the cab to until I showed him I had money. He wanted to see the cut of my money before he'd take me home. 64 was 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 pretty special. Mm. Uh, bottom to top. And beating Port. And beating Port. Beating Port, I guess, was the ultimate.